You are about to discover a fantastic studio filming setup that I'm using today to film both vertical story videos for Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and TikTok, and the exact same studio setup that I'm using to film this video now in horizontal. And the best part is I don't have to move the camera at all to make it possible. I'll show you the exact equipment I've got in my studio. I'll show you the exact workflow I use to put videos out to YouTube and in horizontal and to TikTok in vertical, as well as share those in stories. And I'll even show you how I make money out of all this. I just calculated the other day, I make an average of $275 for every video I upload. And the best part is with this filming studio, it only takes me one to three hours to make a video. And in fact, with these story videos, I can make four or five of them in an hour. They're coming out faster than ever. For TikTok and YouTube and Facebook, Instagram, story videos in vertical format are hot. My videos are actually getting watched more in mobile than in horizontal. That said, you want to put both of these filming approaches together because when you get people to discover you and watch a little bit in a vertical mobile friendly video and then you get someone over to watch your longer format horizontal videos, that's when you make sales, that's when you get ad revenue, that's when you can do a whole business out of this. Well, what I'll do first is walk you through the studio tour where I show you how all the equipment is set up as soon as I tell you what equipment I'm using. Then we'll go through my workflow as to how I actually use the equipment. And after that, I'll show you how I make money out of all of it. This is the equipment I'm using. You can obviously spend less on various parts of it. However, if you want to actually make the most money and have it be worth the most time all of this on here costs less than two thousand dollars and it will give you the same quality setup that I've got along with you might need a green screen which I've got the office painted so I don't need a green screen you might also need some foam to absorb some of the sound and to have it in a soundproof or sound resistant or minimal sound area. However, all of this together, you can get at a price that will allow you to make a lot of other money. Uh, that said, I recommend just try doing some lower quality videos to make sure you enjoy doing it before investing in all the equipment. This is the equipment I'm using today. Canon XA11 camcorder, Magewell capture card. The Canon XA11 camcorder gives me this beautiful picture. I take it out of the Canon camera with the HDMI cable and it goes right into the capture card, right into the computer in real time with OBS. I don't have to film and then take the card out and edit it. It comes in ready to go. I next have a selfie ring light that allows me to have beautiful lighting on myself. This was a missing element for my studio for a lot of time. And what I love is if I hit buttons, I can change exactly how the lighting looks on me. I can pick the exact light that looks the best. I can turn it up or down to get the right amount of shine so that it's not too much and not too little. I also pair that with paper lanterns that are 75 watts, reveal light bulbs that give me a nice even light across my green screen to give it that professional look. For the microphone, I use the Electro Voice RE20 cardioid microphone for the USB interface that actually takes the input from the microphone and gets it into a format the computer can handle. I use a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. For the software, I use open broadcaster software with profiles and scenes for horizontal and vertical videos. All I need to do in OBS is I go into profiles and I set up different formats that the screen is in. I set up a profile for horizontal where it's 1920 by 1080. Then I make another profile for vertical where it's 1080 by 1920. In the scenes, I do the same thing. I make specific scenes for each profile. That way, everything is where it's supposed to be. I have an Elgato Stream Deck to move my face around like this. That helps me to have flexibility and not need to edit the videos I record, which saves me a fantastic amount of time and energy. You might need to edit your videos at first. I do that with Final Cut Pro X. What I'll do now is do a walkthrough of the studio with you then I will come back and talk about my workflow. Welcome to my home office studio. I will simply narrate this on my green screen 
over it as I walk through it because that'll give you the best picture quality and audio quality while allow me to focus on talking about what you're seeing. This starts off in my backyard, which is so cool. I've got an office built in my backyard. Let's shawty, I can take you there. You can come right into my office, witness my commute to work. I'm so grateful for this. Welcome to the studio. This is my standing desk with the Mac iMac next to it. I have two computers, a Mac Pro on the right, which is that black cylinder, and then I have the iMac. The iMac is my editing computer and my backup. The Mac Pro runs these five monitors and is my filming and live streaming setup. The key, the centerpiece to making all of this work is this right here. This is where I've got the camera in the middle flipped over 90 degrees clockwise. This allows me to have the videos without needing to move anything. I film the vertical videos just by using that camera and putting a background in OBS. Then as you can see for the horizontal videos, I simply put my face on there from the mobile shot, which actually gives me a better picture than putting the camera horizontal in the first place, which is amazing. I stand here at a standing desk and film all this and behind me is a green screen because the green screen allows me to stand up here and film in front of wherever I'm at. I've also got some soundproofing foam, some pictures of my family here for that good energy and vibe. I've got an air conditioner. I live in Florida in the United States in St. Petersburg. It gets warm. I turn the air conditioner off while I film. I turn it back on when I'm not filming. I've got paper lanterns up here for lights and I do all the editing once I film it on the Mac Pro. I use Dropbox to shift it over and do all my editing on the iMac, that way it can render on the iMac without disrupting my filming process. This is the computer I use, it's a Mac Pro. I use it because I originally got it, I could live stream to three websites at once. This here is the Scarlett 2i2 that I bring the audio from the RE20 microphone. This is a microphone I use, very good quality microphone. I bring the audio from this microphone with the pop shield on it to help take the edge off of any of the air that flows out of my mouth. And I put that directly into the USB audio interface, which brings it into OBS. You do need to set in OBS a little offset on it to make sure the audio is right. What I'm showing you here, this is my ring light. This ring light makes a huge difference for lighting. This is the one thing I got into my studio that allowed me to take my setup to the next level and get the lighting right on my face. As you see, I can play with it here. Whatever light mode I set it on makes a big difference to how the quality of it looks. What I've got on all my desktop backgrounds, I found some days I get so much into what I'm doing, I lose context. And especially in 2019, I got a bit down on myself and lost some self-confidence. And I surround myself in my studio with the statistics of all that I've done already. That way I keep in context that I've got an amazing life, amazing business, and I'm showing up here to continue that and to help you with that. I work at a standing desk because that helps me to give a lot more energetic space speeches and videos. I have all of my lights on a surge protector where I turn all of them off and I turn them on and it lights the whole studio up. It makes it very easy when there's seven or eight, nine different lights in the studio to just plug them into the one surge protector. I don't have the lights on battery backup, whereas everything else is on battery backup. I've got paper lanterns with these reveal light bulbs to help give me a nice even lighting across me. Then I've got these lights down at the bottom to light the green screen behind me along with all the computers and monitors on battery backup. For fun, I've got a little Christmas tree down here to add a little atmosphere with my subwoofer and my sound system. I've got the keyboard and the mouse up there. And yes, I, if I'm on this computer, I don't lower or adjust the standing desk position. I've got this Elgato Stream Deck here that allows me to change position. I can turn off the microphone if I want to. I can take my head completely off it. I can mute the microphone, unmute it. I can start and stop recording. And now with seeing all this, you've got an idea of how the equipment comes together. I take the 
camera in the middle. It goes out directly to the capture card, which goes into the Mac Pro. I also use OBS to take whichever monitor I want. I've tried even multiple monitor setups where I can do live dictation straight on to OBS by putting it in a second monitor and putting that on the background. This studio setup, I'm grateful to show this to you today. I think this might be really helpful for you if you're looking to make the best quality videos with the least amount of time. And what I'll do now is show you my workflow that I use to actually make all the videos. Now that I've shown you how all the equipment fits together, the key thing you want to learn is the workflow. How do I actually use this equipment to translate an idea in my head into the reality of an uploaded video? This is the workflow I use, which allows me in just an hour to three hours of real time to take an idea like this that was just a thought in my head and to make it into a reality that you are able to watch. My goal with this system is to minimize the resistance, minimize anything that slows down the time it takes for me to go from idea to reality. The first thing I do is to research a new video idea and use canva.com to create a thumbnail or presentation. This often is one of the most time consuming parts. The thumbnail on a YouTube video is very important for click through rate and to communicate the basic ideas of the video. Presentations like this help enhance the quality of the information I'm giving especially for people who just skim through the videos and to give it a lot lot more professional look. It takes me sometimes five or ten minutes to put on a suit jacket and do tie and do my hair up. I've found that I get better results on my videos when I do that. With researching a new idea, I do this by Googling, by looking around, I look in TubeBuddy, I ask, I figure out what video needs to be made that would help somebody. Especially where, if you're searching on YouTube, are you looking for something and not finding it? This video is exactly one of those topics where I searched and looked and I didn't find anything right away showing me how that one could set up both a vertical and horizontal video production studio in the exact same format without having to change any of the equipment itself. I think of something that I could be very valuable and make a big difference to you and uh, then I go forward and make it. Once I've got, sometimes I just literally make a quick thumbnail. Occasionally I don't even make a thumbnail and I just jump up and record. A lot of my old videos were done that way. Now I usually at least make a thumbnail and do a bit of research beforehand. Once I've got that, I step up to the studio and just start talking in real time using the Canva presentation and switching among windows as needed. My belief is when you actually know what you're talking about, you don't need to prepare and edit a whole lot. That said, it does take some practice. This is probably the six or seven thousandth video I filmed. When I first started, I did blunder a lot more. I did go ah uh, and um and make a bunch of awkward mistakes and mistakes. What I do now is I've lowered my standards a little bit as to what is critical. If I say a little um or ah uh or so or something awkward or double clutch, that's fine. It's not worth going through and editing the video over because I see the value of having an honest, unedited experience online where you get the humanity coming all the way through. When I first started, I was more concerned with how I'd look and try and be professional and need to speak right, don't want people to think anything negative. And after enough critical comments, I'm like, well, I might as well just record it and do it as fast as possible because no matter how I do it, someone's not going to like it and someone probably is going to like it. What you can do to enhance your ability to just talk through a video without having to edit it is to practice speaking in every single aspect of your life as if you're filming a video. Just notice whenever you say something to anyone at any time that you wouldn't need to put into a video. For example, if you wouldn't want to go um or ah 18 times, practice not talking like that to your mother and it'll become more natural when you make videos. Practice makes perfect. If you aim to be able to make videos without editing, that saves a ton of time. What I do today, I have a very fast editing setup that I use to give every single time I make one video today, it actually comes out into two different videos. When I film a video like this, except for this specific video because of the studio tour, technically 
I could have just done this one without editing it. I took a little bit longer approach and put the studio tour in also. Most of the time, I just film a video directly and then upload it to Vimeo where Jerry Banfield University members are able to go in and watch every single video I've uploaded to Vimeo, which there's thousands already, and I'm putting more up, some that aren't available anywhere else. I put the video to Vimeo with no distractions. It's got no ads. It's got no annotations or out sales outros on any of the newer videos at least. I put them all to Jerry Banfield University and that way for members, for those who are supporting my business the most, you get the best watching experience. What I do for sharing for free on other platforms is I've started doing this recently instead of using the same sales outro, I record a custom sales outro every time for YouTube. That way if you're watching on YouTube and you watch 10 different videos to the end, you'll get a different sales pitch 10 different times for the same basic membership, either university or I have a small amount of things I offer and that way I can do a custom sales pitch every time that's most appropriate for the video. Once I film that sales outro, I take those two files, the original video that was uploaded to Vimeo, and I take the sales outro, put those into Final Cut Pro X, I then put a set of annotations that pop up about every 30 seconds, which helps to get more followers on my social media accounts, helps to get more website visitors, helps to make sales, helps that if just one person watches one of my videos, Throughout the video, the annotations have mentioned all the basic things I want somebody to know about me and to do with me. For example, follow me on all these different platforms, all the different services I have on my website, things like my podcast, etc. Once I've got that, I render all of it into first a thumbnail using the first frame of the video, then an MP3, which I use in my podcast. If it's appropriate, for example, if it's a really technical tutorial, I won't put that on my podcast. If it's more audio friendly, I will. Finally, I render it into an MP4 and that gets uploaded to my YouTube channel. Then on YouTube, my videos have the chance to be discovered indefinitely through YouTube search because I aim all of them to get found in YouTube search by thinking, what would somebody search for to find this video? The ideal thing to do when running this setup is to combine it with stories to also make vertical videos because on YouTube, when you're putting up videos on YouTube, most of the traffic I'm getting on my videos is from YouTube search which is very high quality traffic, which consistently leads to sales, which has been responsible for most of the money I've earned online from people searching, finding me, and then ending up following and buying something. The best new trend is discovery and re-engagement through vertical mobile friendly story videos. TikTok is doing absolutely fantastic right now for discovery. I film a 15 second video on TikTok, put it out there, and I've got over a million views in the last month on TikTok, even though I'm relatively new on there compared to having almost 300,000 subscribers on YouTube, and I got last month about 200,000 views on YouTube. YouTube views tend to be an average of five minutes each, making them a lot more valuable than a three to 10 second view on TikTok. The ideal step is to combine both of these together, to put those videos out on YouTube every day that are available in the horizontal format that have the high quality audience, the longer watch time YouTube search, and also to put out stories that go on TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. This way, I'm able to re-engage people who are already following me with these stories and I'm able to reach new audiences, especially on TikTok with my videos. On YouTube, I'm getting more views on my stories within the first seven days that I share them than I'm getting on my new videos within the first seven days I share them, which makes sense because stories only last seven days, whereas the YouTube videos are up forever and most of the views I get are on videos that have been uploaded longer than a month. Combining the two of these together is amazing because I put a video up on TikTok, somebody subscribes on my YouTube channel, watches several videos like this, goes in, buys my $19.95 a month membership, texts and has some questions answered from me there, upgrades into the partner program for thousands of dollars, buys some calls with me and maybe even has an in-person event and suddenly spent $10,000 with me for a little 15 second video that I put up on TikTok. 
that got out there and got discovered for free. Note that I am not using any paid ads to do this system and it's earning me 10 plus thousand dollars a month consistently and has for years even without doing the story workflow. Here's the story workflow that I use. I just first research a new video idea, same as with YouTube, how I get the idea. The difference is I just create a real quick vertical presentation on Canva, use that on a different monitor. Notice that one monitor on the left was vertical. Record the video very quickly in OBS, then upload it to TikTok, add one of my songs, apply hashtags, publish it everywhere in stories. This process can be done for four or five videos in one hour. My intention is to share one video like this every day in the morning, first thing in the morning on TikTok, YouTube stories, Facebook stories, Twitter, and Instagram stories. Th collectively, I'm averaging something like 50 plus thousand views a day from these story videos I put up. Meanwhile, my horizontal videos are averaging maybe 10 or 20,000 views a day from those. However, the minutes watched is much more on my horizontal videos. I've given you a good look at how I run the two workflows, and the last thing to talk about is how I actually turn all this into money. And this is the most important step if you wanna be able to do this as a business. The basic idea with my whole system is to always funnel everybody to my website. At various points, I've tried to funnel people and successfully sent people to many different websites, and what I've found is that's not an ideal long-term approach. For the best long-term approach, it's important I consistently send people to jerrybanfield.com because in 10 or 20 years, that's the website I can count on the most to still be there. What I notice is it often takes a lot longer than one would like if you're showing up and working every day and making videos and hoping people will watch them. It often takes years to get a great following, to build a business system that's just bringing in lots of traffic all by itself. The more I focus people coming to my website, the more I make the most of every single person who discovers me on all these different platforms. I've sent people over to other places in the past and what happens when one of those gets taken down or they change their business system or they go out of business or they suspend my profile or they make some other change to the URL. All of a sudden, as in many of my older videos, you'll find me pitching something that I no longer, if you actually go to it, it's not there anymore. And that is a big negative. It's a, a huge loss that when you funnel it to your own website, you don't lose that. And you build value that gives you a huge return and gives you a dependable business. What I do is I sell a membership for $19.95 a month at Jerry Banfield University that provides immediate access to uh, my cell phone number for SMS messages in the USA and Canada and my WhatsApp number for messages globally. It gives the ability to watch all my video courses with no ads, annotations, or outros. It gives the ability to come to any of my events at no additional cost and it has the ability to do guest posts that I will actually share with all my followers on social media when they're done correctly and I think they are worth sharing. I've got three different pricing plans for that, $19.95 a month or $2.97 for life for just the university. What I then do is upsell to my partner program, which currently has a cost of $2,416 and goes up 3%, so I multiply by 1.03 every time somebody joins to get into my mastermind. This gives me the focus to have something with the $19.95 a month that's available to many of people on earth can afford that and would find that valuable and would get a lot of value out of just the $19.95 a month. Then I've got for the people who have and want to spend more money and get a higher level experience, I've got that as well. I also am starting off with of resuming offering paid calls and I'm starting off offering the ability to have me come in person for a weekend for a one-on-one -on -one event that will be up soon. This is how I'm able to consistently make 10 plus thousand a month as much as 90 plus thousand a month at the highest so far 
And this is a system that I think can work for a lot of different people with a lot of different ideas. If you always set it to yourname.com, the beauty is you can set the same membership up with online courses and the same benefits that then you can teach all these different subjects. You can expand your horizons. You can do whatever you want to and still have this financial support for that consistently coming to you. I'm so grateful you've watched this. I hope this has been fantastically helpful for you. I've enjoyed making it which gives me a good indication of what your experience is. Now, if this is on Jerry Banfield University, that's it. And if it's not, then it will come the sales pitch.